Hey, it's me again, and I'm here to talk about movies again, because I love movies. And because it's um, almost 2020, I thought I'd go through some of the best movies, or more so my favourite movies that came out during the last decade. So, I'll start off at 2010, and I guess we'll work our way through. 127 hours, which when I was about 11, I was obsessed with James Franco because of this movie. I had a big crush on him, watched a lot of movies, watched the Spider-Man movie that he's in. <laughs> I loved the movie, The Skin I Live In, and it's not like I would call it one of my favourite movies or anything like that, because I probably I wouldn't really want to watch it again. I think I've seen it twice. Because the first time I watched it, I was definitely too young to have been watching it, and it was really disturbing. So then I feel like maybe I revisited it, so it was a little bit less disturbing. Also in 2011, we had The Artist. Lots of people were like, oh, that's such a gimmick, which is pretty true. I really like the movie, but it's quite niche, so it makes a lot of sense that not everyone um, really went for it. Tomboy is about this um, little kid who moves into a new town and convinces all the other kids that they're a boy. And then, yeah, it gets a little bit messy. And it's actually it's actually one of my favourite movies. It has the nicest summery vibe, so if you're in the mood to watch something that feels really warm and wholesome, you could even just watch it just for the, for the cuteness and the wholesomeness of it all. Detachment, which is another one of my favourite movies, which not many people have heard of, so whenever I say it, Oh, I haven't heard of that, and then probably never look it up afterwards. <laughs> so, um, it's starring Adrian Brody, and it's all about um, Adrian Brody is this substitute teacher, and is working in this like um, lower socioeconomic area um, with these kids who are really like troubled kids, and it makes me cry every single time I watch it. I never cry watching movies, so it's like saying something. Is this a bloody um, um, <laughs> counselling session or me making a video? You tell me. I've got another banger. <laughs> Super 8. One of my favourite movies again. And lots of people compare it to Stranger Things and they're like, oh Super 8 came first, so I like Super 8 and not Stranger Things. Or I like Stranger Things and not Super 8. But, but Stranger Things is like three seasons of like, of the same content. So it's like you get more Super 8. The more the merrier. I love the retro kids on bicycle stuff. Like half of these movies seem to be from 2011. Hugo. And I really liked it but a lot of people were like that's his worst movie. I love movies and this movie is just about loving movies. We need to talk about Kevin. It's like one of the most frustrating movies ever. Because no one believes her! Oh it's so annoying. Wes Anderson is my favourite director, so of course Moonrise Kingdom has got to be in this list. I love Bob Balaban as the weatherman. It's like the best part of the movie. You could just make the little snippets with Bob Balaban. That would be good enough. You don't even have to make the rest of the movie. I love the rest of the movie, but just Bob Balaban. Also 2012, got Lawrence Anyways, which is one of Xavier Dolan's movies. Lawrence Anyways is about this transgender woman, and it's re it's really a love story. And it was just a beautiful movie. The soundtrack again, the cinematography, the colours. I love it when you watch a movie and you can remember distinct shots from it. Because oftentimes you watch a movie and it's really beautiful, but you never really remember any shots because there wasn't anything memorable about it. But this movie had like water pouring indoors. It was incredible. It's a, like a beautiful movie. It's 168 minutes long, so it's a bit of a long one. Alan Partridge, the movie. It's just a movie that you can watch over and over again. It's great. Alan Partridge, um, the movie was the first thing of Alan Partridge that I that I had ever seen, and. I've seen a lot more of it now, and I wasn't really familiar with Steve Coogan either, and he's pretty freaking terrific. What I would recommend is if you haven't seen 24 Hour Party People, you need to see the opening scene of 24 Hour Party People, where Steve's character is in like a, a hand glider? Yeah, he's like hand gliding, and it's absolutely hilarious. Whiplash. I watched this video essay, some of you might have seen it, where this guy 
um, compares Whiplash to Black Swan and how they're both about artists that are kind of obsessed with their art and they're trying to reach perfection and how it can like destroy you basically. This movie was like the most fast paced thing. It's like you're in it from the very beginning until the end and you're like clenched and you're like oh <laughs> and like right up to the very end and the music's great, the performance is great, the colours, editing, like everything about it is great. You gotta see Whiplash. If you haven't seen Whiplash yeah, what we do in the shadows, it's a mockumentary about vampires living in a share house. It's basically the premise. And it's very, very funny. One of my favourite movies of 2014 was The One I Love. You've got Elizabeth Moss, you've got Marc Duplass, you've got awesomeness on the screen, basically. So this couple goes on holiday, and in the pool house, there's something mysterious going on, and it's got to do with doppelgangers, or clones, or... I don't really want to say anything about it, just in case you watch it. So it's not spoiled. So, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Of course this is in here because I love, I love my Wes Anderson. <laughs> Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, which came out in 2015. I really love movies that are about making movies because I love movies and I love making movies. You've got me hooked if you're making a movie about making movies. Beasts of No Nation, the story is harrowing. So if you're up for something light, do not watch Beasts of No Nation <laughs> because it's brutal. But if you're up for something brutal, um, very, it's a very captivating movie. But yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that one, even though it is really intense. Hunt for the World of People is another one of my favourite movies. <laughs> I wish this movie didn't end and it just kept going because I love the characters so much. I just love to keep going with them on that adventure. Sam Neill, Julian Dennison is fantastic. The woman who plays the police officer is so funny. <laughs> Call me by your name. So I, I watched this movie in the middle of summer and it's a very summery movie. It makes you feel like warm and the whole movie is shot to feel Summary. You've noticed it's gotten quite a lot darker in the background. It's because it's gotten quite a lot darker in the back, in the in outside in the outside regions. So Phantom Thread came out in 2017, and it's directed by Paul Thomas Anderson and starring Daniel Day Lewis, whom I love. The cinematography in Phantom Thread is absolutely beautiful, with the music as well. It makes me shed tears. Like, I was watching it for the first time and I cried, and I was like, I wasn't expecting to cry, <laughs> and it wasn't sad. It was just really beautiful. Here's another one that I think lots of people wouldn't have seen. It's called Damsel, and it was made by the Zelna brothers. They're the same guys who made Kamiko the Treasure Hunter, but Damsel I really loved, and actually I, you know a movie's good when you finish watching it and then you immediately watch it again. So when I first watched it, I kind of thought, I was like, oh yeah, this is just, it's gonna follow this character as the main character. And then it's like, oh no, it's actually quite different from what I expected, but I actually love it. And I love Westerns. I love the soundtrack, the production design, just the way it's shot. Pretty much everything about it. Damsel is a banger and people, more people need to see it, mid-90s. It's the first movie that Jonah Hill directed and I thought it was really, really good. I was really surprised by how much I liked the soundtrack because it's a lot of like 90s rap and I'm not hugely into rap, um, or at least I wasn't before I watched it. So I don't actually have as many recent films in this list and it's because I don't know how things will will stand the test of time, so I'm like hesitant to mention them. <laughs> and I'll see ya probably in six months time when I work up the nerve to talk to a camera again. Bye. Okay, so I'm now going to show you what the lighting situation is for this video so you can understand my woes. <laughs>